it began with darkness. Pitch black. Formless and empty. Into this darkness, God created light. Created entire galaxies, countless wonders beyond imagination. And to behold his glory, he breathed life into his children. He loved them with a passion burning brighter than the sun. And for a time, he made his dwelling with them in a beautiful, perfect world. But then, this love was torn apart, fractured by a crushing abyss so wide that it could never be crossed. An immense chasm created by our sin our pride, our disobedience. And so the darkness returned, and with it came death, wars, plagues, and exile. But our Father refused to leave his children in the darkness. So once again, he sent his light to dwell on earth. To become Emmanuel, God with us. To teach us, to heal us, and save us from the terrible wages of sin. But where he preached peace, he was met with hostility. Where he preached love, hatred burned against him. Where he preached forgiveness, his enemies cried out for execution. He was arrested, tortured, and sentenced to death as a criminal. With nails in his hands, Jesus bore the unfathomable weight of our sin and cleansed us from all unrighteousness. They assigned him a grave with the wicked and sealed his tomb with a stone. Darkness reigned over the land once more as hope seemed to vanish. But on the third day, his light pierced the shadows. His power shook the earth. The Son of God rose, declaring victory over death and throwing wide the gates of heaven. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. His love still calls to us. His grace still covers us. This is the gospel. This is the good news of Christ. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hope is alive. Hope is alive indeed. God is eternal. Hallelujah. Let us give thanks for what God has done. God of grace and power, we come rejoicing in Christ's empty tomb. We come trusting in the good news that tells us Christ is with us. For the risen Christ is living proof that you care about our lives, O oh God. The risen Christ offers to us glimpses of hope, even in our tears. As the tomb is not quiet, it speaks, it proclaims, it is a promise of eternal life. Thank you, gracious and almighty 
Good morning, everyone, and happy Easter. <laughs> Just a big welcome to all of our longtime worshipers, first time visitors, and online followers. It is great to have you here today. As we worship together today, I just have a, uh, a, a, just a one or two quick announcements. Next week, Father Philip, who has been just a wonderful friend to this congregation for uh, some time now, is going to be doing a class, an adult ed class for us. Uh, it's going to be in between services, so it's going to start around 9.45 in the morning. It's going to go for the next four to six weeks. And it's going to be called, What Now, Now That Easter's Over? And so what he's going to do is he's going to take a key disciple, and he's going to talk about that with you, about what their response was after Easter was over, and how that really speaks into our lives and our hearts and our experiences today. So that starts next week. It'll be up in our adult lounge uh, uh, classroom east, um, excuse me, yes, adult lounge east, and then you can also follow us uh, on Zoom, and we'll be sending that link out this week as well. Uh, as many of you know, because we've been announcing for several weeks, but our second workshop service, we're moving outside, and so a lot of what you see here is going to be moved outside in the interim time in between services. And so if you are someone who sponsored uh, a lily uh, this morning, we're going to allow you to take it with you this week, uh, today, if you want to, to take it home and be a part of your family celebrations this afternoon. 
and uh, all of the other ones, we will be moving outside for the second worship experience. So it is so glad to have you here. Christ is risen in so many ways today. This is the most full that we have been blessed to have our congregation in the last year because of COVID. And we are here and we are glad to be here. So Christ is risen not just in our, uh, uh, in our lives today, but in our church. May your spirit be lifted today as we feel that light of Christ come into this place. Behold, Jesus is making all things new. Amen.
Won't you take a moment and uh, pray with me? God of the bright and morning star, God of the rising sun, God of darkness banished, we come to praise and worship you. We thank you for empty tombs, for disciples running with good news. Thank you, Lord, for the presence, for your presence alive, powerful, and resurrected. Thank you. We celebrate your victory over death, over all the powers that would defeat us. Help us, Lord, to grasp resurrection, to understand its power, to see its force at work in our world, overturning evil empires, changing the hatred that sometimes dwells within us, moving the world slowly, forcefully, bending us towards love and truth. For on this day of great gladness, you, are empower, you empower us to be your ambassadors, that we might be proclaimers of good news. Good news in our kitchens today and in our living rooms. Good news in the offices and workshops that we reside. Good news in fields and factories. Help us to be the good news. Walking softly on this good earth, caring gently for all your people, living hopefully into your kingdom. And so today, we just think of all those who are grieving, especially those whom we know personally and their situations weigh heavy on our heart. We t today, we, we pray for those who are, are sick and dying, and yet we have good news to share because today reminds all of us that you will take care of us always, even until the end of time, no matter what happens. Today, we pray for places in the world that are torn by war and by bloodshed, some of those right here in our own country. In this world of broken hopes, Lord, of shattered dreams, today we catch sight of your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we pray this all in the person of Jesus, who lives and reigns in us forever, as we pray together the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear these words from the 16th chapter of Mark, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee, and there you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb, 
They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. I brought this morning a brand new, crisp $100 bill. Does anybody want it? <laughs> anybody? Raise your hand if you would like that $100 bill. That's a permanent marker, by the way. Oh my goodness, did I just cut that? Kind of fixed. doesn't look all that crisp anymore. <laughs> Some real fresh brewed tea. Ooh. Oh, that's going to leave a stain. No way about it. You know what it needs. It needs some fresh potting soil. Dirt. Good old dirt. <clears throat> Maybe some more tea. Oh, yeah. A dirty, stained, cut up, torn up, abused, $100 bill. Who among you, if I did not offer this to you today, would not take it? That right there is the good news of today. See, Jesus came to help us know that we are a value. That $100 bill is still worth $100 bit. $100. How many of you would still take it? Wipe it off, shake it off, and go spend it, correct? Jesus came to help us to know that we are a value, always have been and always will be. Each and every one of us, no matter what has happened to you, no matter what you have done, no matter what you feel about yourself, no matter what you feel you may deserve, no matter what others feel you may deserve, you are still just as important to God as you were the day that you were created. God still loves you and recognizes the value in you and of you. Do you believe me? Jesus says that the greatest commandment is to love God, and right after that is the command that we should love one another. The commandments are interesting because I have heard that the true translation should be closer to we are a people that love God. We are a people that love one another. Have you ever heard someone say, in this house, this is the way we do it? That's actually how the commandments are really laid out. In this house, in this family, this family of God, we love each other. 
We are a people of love. Very few seeds can just sprout out of thin air, meaning it takes a little dirt and darkness to get them started. And that's very interesting if you think about it. We have to sow seeds that require sunlight, but first we have to bury them in dirt. Almost every seed out there, almost every tree or plant, well, they all started in dirt and darkness. They had to figure out which way it was to the sun. They had to pray that someone would water them. There is not a single one of us that has not been through at least some of what Pastor Mike demonstrated for us. Some of us have some serious dirt on us out there. Our laundry is dirty and we need to air it out. Some of us could spill some serious tea about ourselves or someone around us. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, spilling tea nowadays is to gossip or to be gossiped about. We could probably even spill tea about someone we love. Many of us have been labeled or have labeled others, called names or been called names. Most of us have been hurt or harmed and somewhat healed, at least somewhat. At least we've maybe applied a Band-Aid or some sticky tape. Maybe we found ourselves in sticky situations. Whatever you dream up, whatever you thought up while Pastor Mike was harming this innocent $100 bill, there is nothing you can think of that is beyond the love of God. Jesus sacrificed himself on Friday so that we would have no doubt of it today. See, this is why Jesus comes to us. Not because we are living in paradise and he wants to join us. Not because we have it all figured out and he finally thinks he would enjoy hanging out with us. But because we are lost and covered in mud. Jesus comes to us to help clean us up. To make us well. To make us whole. To remind us that we are of value no matter what we have been through. And that we are worth everything to him. He wants each and every one of us to know his love. God's love in our lives and is willing to sacrifice everything to make sure we know it and believe it. When the women go to the tomb and find it empty, they are scared. They think they have been abandoned, betrayed, left alone. Then they're told to go to Galilee, because that is where they will find Jesus now, I know that some of the disciples actually get to experience the resurrected Jesus. How powerful that must have been in their lives. But most of the followers, including some of these women, only experience the resurrected, the still living Jesus, through the seeds he planted. See, going back to Galilee would have been going back to where Jesus did most of his healing, his preaching, his storytelling, his loving. Going back to Galilee is where we would find the folks that had had their lives transformed by this man that made them him, excuse me, that made them believe in the value of their own lives once again. Going back to Galilee would mean running into former lepers that no longer had to live on the dump. Women that were about to be stoned to death, saved by Jesus, reminding us all that we must be careful about throwing stones in glass houses. Where people have begun to believe that the last could be first and the first should be last. Galilee 
is where they have learned that even the Samaritan, the enemy, could, could be the one with a better heart, a more caring heart. Galilee is where people have begun to see themselves as the salt of the earth. And salt brings flavor. It is a value. See, people were sometimes paid in salt. You're worth your weight in salt. Salt cleans wounds, helps healing occur. Salt preserves and melts ice-cold hearts. Galilee is where people who have begun to see themselves as the light of the world reside. Galilee is where the seeds have been planted and now the garden is beginning to grow. Galilee is a richer, more beautiful place because of the love that Jesus planted there. So go there, the women are told, to see Jesus and experience him still. And this is what Jesus asks of all of us. Listen to my stories, my commandments, and live them out. Learn to love and then do it. Love one another. Every time you call someone just because you are thinking of them, you are sowing a seed of love. Every time you take someone a meal or send a card, every time you pray for someone, every time you stand up for someone, every time you help others to recognize when a joke isn't funny, it's sexist, bigoted, or oppressive, and you won't stand for it, you sow seeds of love. Every time you help someone Tend to someone, feed someone, listen to someone, remind someone of their inherent value, that which is of God and can never be diminished, never. You are sowing seeds of love. It may take a while for those seeds to blossom. Someone else may even need to help those seeds find the light and break out of the dirt. But if we love God, we love each other. Jesus died because they told him that he could deny that his stories and lessons and actions were real, so people would stop following him. Or he could continue to let others see him as the Son of Man, the Son of God, but they would have to put him to death to stop his growing popularity their way. Jesus refused to deny the love he came to share, and so they killed him. But they didn't stop him, because love prevailed. That love grows to this day in anyone that has known the love of God in any form. We can live broken and dirty because God still knows our value and our worth. But life is so much more beautiful, and it is as God intends it, when we help each other to break free of the dirt and to reach for the sun, God's sun. That's what we do for each other and for everyone anywhere that we encounter when we love God. See, because in this house... We love each other because in this house we even love our enemy because we know that they are of value in this world and to our God. In this house we sow seeds of love and make sure they have every chance to grow. In this house we know that Jesus lives and we continue to nurture, nurture the garden he began by sowing seeds of love, even in the dirtiest of us $100 bills. You are of value. You are loved. Amen. They hadn't journeyed to the garden yet to pray. And that would lead to an arrest, a choice given the crowd early on Friday morning between Jesus and a man named Barabbas.
They chose Barabbas. And Jesus is, is led to a cross and crucified in the middle of two thieves. By three o'clock in the afternoon, he's already pronounced dead and is taken down and placed in a tomb. And there, a stone was rolled over the entrance. They thought that was the end of the story. But God would have no hearing of it. For in three days, on Easter Sunday, the day that we celebrate today as Resurrection Sunday, Jesus rises from the dead. For all of us, that we might know eternal life and the resurrection Christ offers. And the understanding of that all started that Thursday night right here at a common table where he was gathered around celebrating Passover, sharing with his closest disciples and friends and followers. And he lifted up the bread, something that would have been common at every meal, and he broke it. This is my body broken for you. And every time that you eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. And likewise, he took a cup. And he shared it with all around the table. This is my blood, which will be poured out for all humankind. And every time you drink of it, you will do so in remembrance of me. Let's pray over these elements. God, we just ask your spirit and your blessing upon these elements that we are about to share. And we pray, O oh Lord, that that same spirit that Jesus offered up on that Passover uh, table fellowship with his disciples, that that same spirit is upon these elements that we share at our table today. We pray a blessing upon every cup and every hand, every wafer which is about to be consumed. Your body, your blood given up freely for us that we might have life and have it in all of its abundance. And we pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. I invite you to take your cup and pour, take off the clear cellophane that is on top. The body of Christ given freely for you. Take and eat. And then take the foil and peel that part back to reveal the juice underneath. The blood of Christ freely given, may it be freely received. Take and drink. Most amazing God, we want to just give thanks on this Easter Sunday as we experience resurrection in our lives, in our church, in our family, in our community, in our nation, in our world, as we experience Resurrection Sunday again, may we come to a deeper understanding of the seeds that we sow and how those seeds are what eventually build your kingdom. Your kingdom come, Lord. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen and amen. Every week, uh, we just share a little snippet of, you know, what our church is doing either in mission or trying to outreach to our members and our community. And I just want to share this week that um, uh, we, we had a, a series of events over Lent leading up to Easter Sunday. Um, they were all hosted online this year again. And through those events, uh, we gave uh, a thousand, more than $1,000 to five different missions that are pretty dear uh, to this congregation. 
And so, you know, one of the things that we just have made sure happens is that the even with everything going on with COVID, that not only does our mission not suffer, but it expands. And so just know that you are a part of a church that is truly trying to make a difference in this place that God has put us. And so uh, uh, sharing gifts with uh, St. Paul's is rather easy. There are some offering plates as you leave today. Uh, our online donations all are hosted through our website, and you just go through to www.sp4u.org. And we also have a texting app as well. So just know that our church is absolutely committed to mission and mission that builds God's kingdom. Amen. Been doing a preaching series on weeds and seeds, and this is an example. We sent this home with all of our youth, and uh, they were uh, made those and had those at home over this Lenten season. Um, some of them survived better than others, but that's just a, an example of some of the things that are going on in our homes during this time. So Mike and I were just debating what to do with this hundred dollar bill. So counters, money counters tomorrow, <laughs> maybe a little dirty. No matter what you've gone through in life, you are of value to God, the same value you had at creation. God loves you just as much as God has always loved you. So know that love in your life. Believe in that love in your life and share that love by planting seeds of love in the lives of others. On your way out, we have some um, um, little packets. Cindy has them, and uh, they're just some seeds to help sow the love of God during this season. So we'd like one per family, please, um, if you would like to take one. And it's a little bit of a surprise in your garden. If you have an area for wildflowers and fun, um, then go ahead and throw those seeds out there. May God bless and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and give you peace until we meet again, my friends. And the mission of St. Paul's is to be a place of worship, refuge, and outreach. He is risen. Amen.